Okay, so one of the things that I really, really like about Love, Death, and Robots are the episodes that kind of end open-ended, where you can create and craft an ending that completely fits the way in which you saw the clues and hints being dropped in the episode that suits basically the story that you want to tell. And I think I'm going to go down basically two separate tracks. We're going to go down the she escaped track without releasing the god and then we're also going to go down the she escaped track after she released the god so for the very first track which is she escaped from basically cthulhu and she didn't release him uh we're going to look at certain hints that are dropped in the episode one of the major hints is she didn't crack as fast as the other members of her unit as Basically, after they escape from the main cave, dealing with the small little spiders, we start to see that the other two members of the unit were starting to fray around the seams. The commander was just completely off his rocker. He was more interested in following the voice and getting to the center and also killing the insurgents than he was prioritizing saving the remaining members of his squad. And the other officer, whose name I think was Spencer, we see him completely have a religious psychotic break where he begins praying and then he instantly gets taken out because he essentially hesitates when the bigger rolling spiders come rolling down the steps. For Harper, she more or less maintained her cool throughout the entire run where she maintained some level of her cool when they ran into the small spiders, level of cool when they ran into the big spiders, and then when they got into the main chamber, her and her commanding officer, while they both got mental blasts and saw images and hear the, heard the voices in their head, the commander instantly succumbed to those voices and to those visions and made the move to essentially release uh, Cthulhu from his prison. Of course, they got into a fight and she kills him. She looks up into the face of the nameless god and then it cuts. And then the next thing we know, she's in the desert, no eyes, no ears, and she's mumbling the alien language. It's highly likely that that mental resistance that she had, which I would say that it's probably something along the lines of a will to survive. Like her will to survive was so strong that she was able to fight against the mental influences of an eldritch horror. When she made it out of the cave, there were basically side effects. He's already inside your mind. His voice is already inside your head. And a result of both seeing and hearing that constantly, she mutilated herself in hopes that it would stop. And it did not, because he's an Eldritch Horror. He's an Eldritch God. Once he gets inside your head, it's an infectious chant. It's an infectious vision. You're going to be constantly seeing those images, even if you no longer have eyes. You're going to be constantly hearing his whispers and his voice, even if you no longer have ears. And what we are essentially seeing are the after effects of that, which is she escaped from the cave, the visions and the sounds did not stop. She muted herself in hopes that it would stop. It continued. And then she has the psychotic break because now she no longer has any hope. On the completely opposite side of that is the she released the Eldritch Horror from the prison that he was essentially trapped in. And there's also evidence of the fact that this could also be the case. Uh, number one, we're unsure whether or not the exit that she sees towards the end of the episode is actually an exit. Is it likely? Sure. Is it also unlikely? Yes. More or less because on their way into the cave, there were multiple defense mechanisms to essentially kill intruders. The spiders ate them down to the bone. Those other rolling spider things would shred anyone who made it to the top of the steps. And then if you even made it into the main area, dude was there to basically drive you mad in hopes that you'd be able to set him free. Now, the other path that we see, and this is one of the things that is a demerit against the escape theory without releasing him, is the fact that if she was to mutilate herself and, or not even mutilate herself, if she was to go on that path, there would also be defense mechanisms expected on that path as well, since it was another entrance into the Eldritch City or the Eldritch Prison, which is there's no way she would have been able to survive going through that area without any weapons. She had, what, two bullets left? 
no grenades. It took basically the entire ammo reserve of her entire unit to make it through one cave and then kind of make it through past the other rolling spider things. It's highly unlikely that if there were defense mechanisms in that area as well, up those steps, that she would have been able to make it through all of them without any type of weaponry outside of that of a knife. Now, the reason why it's highly likely that she did release him is because that upon his release, it's, high, it's extremely probable that all of those defense mechanisms that were put in place to keep him contained would instantly be destroyed. They would instantly cease functioning, essentially because what they were designed to do is no longer possible. The Eldritch Entity has essentially woken up. Or he would use, especially since his ability, we've seen that he's able to dominate the minds of lesser beings. It's highly probable that the second he breaks free, if any of those creatures have minds of their own, he'd be able to dominate them. And she would just be able to waltz right out of the cave with no issues whatsoever. Now, the mutilization of the eyes and ears, that could be something that happened in the chamber itself as she tried to essentially stop him from controlling her and getting inside of her head and it failed or it could have been something that happens once she escapes the cave post setting him free where she's attempting to basically get the visions and the sounds out of her head and then she goes for the <laughs> mutil mutilation in an attempt to break free from the control and it just doesn't work because we do see that at the end of it she is walking through the desert with a set path in mind, not like Aimless One, unless she essentially knows where she's going, but there are no eyes, no ears, and she's, like I said, mumbling the uh, the alien dialect because essentially he's gotten inside of her head and he has control. But yeah, uh, those are basically the two paths. Do I think that she set him free? Yes. Um, while I would love for the ending to really scream that she was able to basically escape and the mutilation which happens is a direct result of um the outer god the chain god the nameless god inside her head and her attempt to basically escape from the visions and the hearing it's highly unlikely she made it out of the caves and passed all of those creature defenses with no ammunition whatsoever what seems the most likely is that she basically got taken control of she set him free upon him becoming free he either destroyed his cage or he dominated the minds and wills of all the creatures inside the cave and then once all of those creatures had essentially ceased functioning she just strolled right out of the cave after she had mutilated herself because he was no longer there but yeah if you agree or if you disagree comment down below let me know let me know what you think happens after we see well it's not even after we see her in the desert what do you think happens do you think that he was released or do you think that she escaped and then how do you basically explain her injuries and how she escaped the cave with no weapons in any way shape or form and i will catch you in the next one